Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now today, I do actually need to review the Asus ROG Strix X670EF with you, but we're going to take a slight little caveat away from my normal testing mythology, where I would normally do stock and overclock, and I'm going to test their new Precision Boost Overdrive mode, where you can effectively put a thermal limit in uh, of 70, 80 or 90 degrees. Now, by doing this, they say you can drop your temperatures, but still get a positive uh, increase in your performance with Precision Boost Overdrive. So less temps, more performance. It actually seemed a bit too good to be true with a very simple uh, uh, fix. Now, the Strix itself is a very, very popular board, and it's one that I needed to get reviewed anyway, so I thought I would just couple the two things together. Now, the Strix is very well laid out. There's a lot of VRMs around the outside of the board, or those the actual data of exactly what they are underneath the hood are, is still very limited. Although it does say 16 plus two power stages on the uh, back of the box. And when I say limited, I mean, I actually want to know what the power stages are. But they are teamed power stages, and they do get fed from both sides. Now, teamed is better than a doubler because with a doubler, you effectively only have one side of the doubler working at once. Whereas with the team, they both do and they've both got their own 12 volt power going into them as well. So it's actually a very clean and good way of uh, spreading the load and reducing temps. And the Asus VRMs are always impeccably low, which is why it's annoying for me that they at launch at all the launches with all the boards. I can never actually see the VRM temps. But the actual heat sink itself just doesn't even get warm to the touch. If you go around and touch the back of the board where the VRMs are like very, very crude, it's not hot. I've done uh, infrared thermals with my gun, doesn't get hot. I just can't tell you with any of the softwares, including their own, it, how good it is. Now you get four uh, M.2 uh, connections across the board. You get one right under the CPU, one in the middle, and then two at the bottom. There's lots of connectivity uh, around the uh, back, Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gig Ethernet, USB-Cs. It does feature BIOS flashback with a tiny little button, as you can see. So very well laid out board, good audio, good layout, plenty of RGB connections for everyone, eight fan headers scattered around the board. Uh, there's quite a lot around the bottom, actually, and still quite a lot up around the top of the CPU header. So all in all, it ticks a lot of boxes, but then we come to performance. And like I said, what you need to do is go into the BIOS, go down to Precision Boost Overdrive, flick across like you can see in the screenshot, and then go in and enable enhancement. Then what you can do is choose whether you want 90, 80, or 70 degrees to be your thermal ceiling. Now we do need to remember that uh, AMD say that the processors are designed to be able to run 24 seven at 95 degrees. And they normally boost themselves to that point. Although we've all thought that voltages have been a little bit aggressive and the temperatures were higher than they really needed to be. Because you can do an undervolt if you want. But this precision boost overdrive thing, I selected 80 degrees. And when we look in the results, you can see the most important thing to take from this is you have the stock result and then you have the precision boost overdrive stroke overclock result. And the overclock result is always in front of the stock result. This is most interesting to see when we look at things like single threaded results, because normally if I was to do an overclock result, what this would then do is you can never get all of the cores running at its maximum peak. So you won't get like 57 or 5800 megahertz or 5.8 gigahertz, whatever you want to call it, running on all of the cores all at once. So by fixing them all into that for all core, it then means with the single core stuff that sometimes you can get a slight performance decrease. With the way that Precision Boost Overdrive works is it kind of negates that. So you've still got the ability for the cores to be able to move around and most importantly, boost when the low threaded stuff comes in. And as you have seen, the single threaded stuff is still in front of the uh, standard result, which is great. But then with the overclock stuff, the multi threaded stuff, sorry, 
there's still a performance increase as well. And our temps did not go above 80 degrees. So after testing this and seeing how easy it is, basically my advice for you is if you are uh, just starting your PCD Master Race journey and you're a little bit scared of things, the BIOS isn't too bad. If you get stuck, there is a CMOS clear button on the back of the board, which will effectively take all of the settings off that you change and put it back to stock. So you've never got to worry about breaking it and it won't start again. But if you go in, first and foremost, for everyone at home, you need to make sure that you've gone in and enabled AMD Expo. If you do that, it means that your DRAM, your memory will run at its rated speed. If you do not do that, it will just sit there probably at 4800 megahertz. No matter if you've got 56 or 6000 megahertz memory, you need to enable Expo or manually set it up for it to be able to run at rated speed. After that, it's pretty much the very simple thing, going in, doing the precision boost overdrive, picking your temperature, doesn't matter what cooler you've got, it will go to the cooler's ability at 80 degrees, which is great. And then you've made a couple of very quick changes to your system and your performance is going to increase, but your temps are going to decrease. And I can't think of a better thing, really. Very quick, easy to do. Your temps come down, your performance goes up. There's nothing not to like. Obviously, you can spend some more time and do more tweaks and messing around in the BIOS if you wanted to, but like I said, for a beginner or someone that's just trying to get the system set up quick so they can start using it and they'll fine tune later, it's a really great way to go about it. So stock but with, is great, but then Precision Boost Overdrive is better. Now, some of you may have seen that the Hero was better uh, at stock than some of the results. Uh, you do just need to remember the Hero is a much, much more expensive board and there will always be differences between the boards. The Hero has probably had a few more BIOS revisions, uh, and I would expect that the boards will all kind of level out later on. We tested with the 7900X, but it will work with all of them. Uh, I would say that I think that the 7700X really kind of needs this as well, because it does get massively toasty. So don't just think because you've got one of the lower end processors that you don't need to do this because you will get a positive benefit with all of them. So hopefully that answers some questions that you may have had at home. Again, we did it in a slightly different way, but I actually think this has been a really good thing for both me to know, but also for me to share with you guys at home. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Tiny Tom Logan with the X670E F Strix and our dive into uh, how the performance is with Asus's new Precision Boost Overdrive Enhancement Mode. Thank you very much. Out. Ding! I meant to do that bit first, didn't I? Ding! Love you, sis. really need to change this battery. <laughs>